Our families are machines. They have many different parts and yet are intricately woven together. No matter the size of our family, a single parent and child or a dozen kids with parents and step parents, you are a family. And when one section falters, all parts are affected. We need to keep our family machines well oiled. And one way of keeping our families running smoothly is with regular family meetings. Not only do they make a smoother running machine, but family meetings also are avenues for teaching our children important life skills. Planning for a weekly meeting demonstrates a commitment to our family. Our calendars may be full of appointments and meetings with other people, so why not with our family members? Are they not important enough to be put into our schedules? No other single family activity can teach so many skills our children will need when they reach adulthood. Family meetings give practical work in listening, in speaking, respecting and appreciating as well as planning, negotiating, and problem solving. It's the best family invention since sliced bread. Even more important than the life skills are the self-esteem and confidence that come when a child experiences being listened to, taken seriously, and included as a needed member of the family. Each person, no matter what age, develops a sense of belonging and significance, two things vital for development. You can't put those into a pill and give it to your child. They have to be developed over time. So begin by talking with your family about meetings that you would like to have when everyone could be available. You could even make invitations. Post an agenda board at a level where all can reach during the week. Encourage family members to write down or draw pictures if they aren't yet able to write of any ideas they would like uh, to have as discussion at the meetings. And when all are gathered, have one person be the leader or the chair and one be the recorder of that meeting. Rotate these jobs weekly so that all will have a chance to hold each position. This is a powerful first step in demonstrating that mom or dad do not run these meetings. All voices will be equal, and the youngest will be in charge of the meeting as often as the oldest. Do not fret that you are turning your house over to a five-year-old. That youngster will be running a meeting, not running everyone's lives. Children will live on the level we ask them to. If we do not demean them and truly give them the power to act and as a responsible and important member of the family, they will do so. They can rise to the occasion. The chair should begin the meeting on a positive note, such as asking each member to give a compliment to the person on their right, or by asking questions like, tell about the best thing that happened to you this week. This can feel uncomfortable for siblings who aren't used to complimenting each other. So parent modeling is very important here. Remember that progress, not perfection, is your goal. Learning to act in this new way takes patience and practice. The chair can go through items from the agenda board and then ask of any other concerns. Then everyone brainstorms for solutions. During these problem-solving activities, all ideas should be treated respectfully. Again, this may be difficult when you first begin to have meetings. Hang in there. Democracy is not always pretty. If parents are really ready to teach and not just punish, then everyone should have a voice in offering solutions, devising plans, and discussing logical consequences if plans are not followed. People are much more likely to follow a plan they've helped create. The more voice children have, the less they yell with their misbehaviors. If a plan can be agreed upon, the decision must be made by consensus and not a majority vote. A solution will never work unless everyone supports it. If an agreement cannot be reached, discuss it at the next meeting. Tough issues may need several discussions. The recorder records the decisions. They may record this by drawing pictures if they are too young to know how to write, and that is fine. Not knowing how to write and spell does not mean you cannot do that job. End each meeting by discussing each member's upcoming calendar of activities. Children need to see how each other's lives are intertwined. 
And don't forget to plan family fun night too. Limit the first meetings to 30 minutes, much less if you have very young children. Your parental attitude is crucial at the meeting's success. Family meetings cannot be disguised parental lectures. Your children, no matter how young, will recognize that camouflage decoy and will not and should not continue to come to the table. These meetings take planning and organizing and time. But where do we want to put our time? Do we want to front load our parenting with discussing, planning, and problem solving at family meetings? Or do we want to constantly clean up our unloyal and broken down family machine with nagging, yelling, lecturing, and struggling for power? And what has happened to our relationship with our children in the meantime if we continually choose the latter? Instead of blaming and shaming our children, we must teach them. The goal is to start a tradition of working closely together. In this family, we are a team. We are as important as any billion dollar corporation. So give your precious family machine the gift of well-oiled tune-ups through regular family meetings. Don't leave this incredible tool out of your parenting toolbox.